sorrow is coming. Mimic, is this a trick? Sorrow is coming. Stay tuned. Sorrow is coming. And I will tell you why it's so important for you to get him. Mimic here isn't lying, and yes, I've tried to do this injured. But, more importantly, Sorrow, and I'm going to call him Demon Sword Fighter Sorrow. Uh, but Sorrow is coming. He is the best unit still in the game uh, in Japan. Even though there's a few units close, uh, we could still safely argue he's probably the most useful unit overall. Um... A lot of people did expect him two months. I kind of figured that they were going to do this during the Dragon Quest timeline. Uh, it makes sense uh, somewhat overall. Um, in, we're about four months behind the newest units in Japan. Uh, and he's be basically being a slowly equal to... He's still the best, but I do expect in the next month or two that there will be a few better units overall than Saro. But as I say, for us, he is going to be king of the meta for the next four months or so. Uh, his leadership effect increases attack power by 15%. Can't go wrong there. Um, and kind of depending on how your team is, um, it could be the best. It could be the second best uh, leadership effect overall. But still, very, very top tier leadership effect. Uh, his skills are good, but that's does not what makes him insanely strong. Uh, so his first is God Sword Slash. Um, inflicts 200% physical damage on an enemy. Um, this one is not translated. This is, or sorry, translated from the Japanese version. Uh, if you boost it up over there, you can see the uh, what they've translated it to, but that's okay. Um, the second skill is Guren's Magic Sword. Flicks heavy frizz, non-reflective spell damage as base on attack power. Uh, and this is kind of important and unique on him, which is great and bad at the same time. So against units that are uh, strong on um, physical dodge, this is a great way to ignore um, dual magus is one. Uh, people who can dodge overall is another. Uh, they can't dodge spells. And you can use his attack power to use this. And if you look at it too, it's got a pretty nice uh, shape of T, range of one. Um, and so it it's something that units can't block. Um, and it is, in a way, uh, going to be a direct counter for Eric as well. And Elena, Dual Magus are, are the top three right now that we usually have to avoid uh, with the... Uh, Damage, you know, complete miss uh, RNG meta. Uh, Demon Sword Fighter Sorrow is going to counter them uh, fairly well. Uh, the last one is uh, going to be Curse Lightning here, but I call it Dark Banner. This is a very powerful skill. It inflicts 400% physical non-elemental damage on an enemy. And unless if they're immune or you have some bad luck, there's a very high probability that it will reduce attack well for three turns and between the magic sword and dark matter because dark matter is so powerful and has that uh, reduced attack with high probability along with Giren's magic sword very very powerful skills overall um he has an awakening skill all status up increase attack defense evasion for three turns first worst first awakening and odd turns up to so, this is where he becomes stronger than Nocturnes. Um, with the Garen's Magic Sword, um, depending on Pearly Gate, you can argue which one is better. I think Garen's Magic Sword is a little better overall with the current meta. But the attack, defense, invasion, turn one, he has good evasion. Turn three and beyond, his evasion becomes incredibly annoying. Uh, let alone his attack and defense going up. Um, and will stay that powerful until turn 
11, and then it'll start to go down. So Demon Sword Fighter Sorrow is great in Arena. I think even better in PvE. And this is why he is the number one unit uh, for most things, because he has the ability to do both. Um, that, on top of his unique skill, which in a lot of games is called Guts. And so what I'm going to call Guts, uh, just because I've played a lot of gotchas and others, but what Guts is, is when he receives a killing blow, he is guaranteed one additional hit, or more, more specifically, when he gets a, dealt a killing blow, he basically revives or keeps one HP one time. So he gets another chance to die. But on a side note, um, if you've got a very long multi-hit, you might be able to get through this guts. Um, so uh, there's ways to kind of get around it. Uh, but it is a pretty powerful... I'm not going to say busted, but it is a pretty powerful... Um, skill that he has even at zero awakenings um it can be annoying in arena you can get around it a little bit but uh with most units uh that are used they have only one hit and that just gives him another chance especially when he's got evasion and you are not using magic or attack skills that do spell damage you will find it to be fairly annoying um, and as I say, in Arena, it could really save your gut. And and more importantly, it kind of helps mitigate RNG with uh, Brutal Blows. I lost my last uh, Guild War because literally every single one of my units died from a Brutal Blow. And uh, even when I was... Uh, you know, correct units, correct things. It just doesn't matter when you have RNG that's completely against you. Uh, second and fourth is Wush and Zam resistance, 25%. Uh, third one here. Another very, very interesting thing. And on top of it makes his guts passive or, you know, revive pass passive. But I'm going to call it guts. Um, even more dangerous. Dark Matter plus 5%. Okay, not a big deal other than 5%, remember, for Dark Matter. It's 20% more uh, damage overall because it's so high. Um, but if HP is 20% or less, then increase physical and spell power by 1.5x. So all of a sudden, that 420 at this point, remember, Turns into 630%, which is way beyond anything uh, that any other unit can do. And that, remember, too, on top of it, he gets attack every uh, turn on top of it. And you could just see the insane numbers that he gets overall. Uh, fourth one is Sam Resistance, 25. And the fifth one gives you Dark Matter, 5% again. And some MP recovery. I'm going to be honest, that MP recovery isn't the biggest deal, but man, um, he can last a very long time, considering that the only skill that really uses a lot, a lot of MP is the Magic Sword. Dark Matter can, but you can get it down into the mid-50s, 60s range, um, which isn't bad at all. And even his uh, normal... Uh, Attack, the 200% physical damage, which has an insane range of up to four, um, is very, very good. Um, I believe actually he gets plus one movement on the first one as well, so I do apologize for not having it there. But looking at his stats, this is 130. Unfortunately, now with uh, uh, the up there, it's hard for me to give the 120 stats now that uh, Japan has... Uh, level rank eight basically so uh, it's not quite as high initially but this is what it will be like in two months um he has greatly high hp at 1328 his mp 
for what he needs it for, and if you do get him to five hearts, which I know is pretty uh, strong whale or incredible luck, 556, and even at 120, it's roughly 500. Uh, a small MP there is still going to be 20-ish uh, to 25 MP, which allows him to do a basic his basic 200% every turn for basically free. Um, that's really powerful. Um, just playing out his attacks credible at 591. And remember, he can buff up his attack and it stacks, uh, and it lasts three turns. So on turns three, five, seven, nine, just he gets really, really strong. And he has very good evasion as well on turn three. Uh, his biggest weakness. I'm kind of using weakness here. <laughs> For an attack unit, his defense is fairly low at 321. He does have the evade, though, which does really counter a lot of that, plus that guts passive that he has. His agility is incredibly up there, 548 as well. Wisdom's 205. <laughs> Movement 3, weight 65. Uh, the preferred weapon, honestly... Um, there are three different weapons that he can use. I'm going to highlight his sword. Uh, I do not know what's going to be officially called, but we've got uh, the Makai sword here. Um, he That's going to be part of his overall. Um, I'm going to call it event. It's relatively small. Uh, I did expect it, though, during uh, this one here because uh, Dragon Quest XI is a little short on stuff to do for how long it's supposed to last so i did expect at least some other event to pop up there so that's what we're getting um he has hp 45 and attack power plus 30. there is no bonus here um there's a, a short one and i'm not really going to do an event video i do apologize um it's just not large enough to really use it for uh it it is, though, going to be in his event. Um, if you don't get it or don't get a good roll with it and you can get the his uh, spell power or the dark matter power, I'm going to be honest, it's really hard for me to say, oh, really go for one or the other skill. Both of those skills are incredibly importantly useful. Gear and magic swords a little bit more what I would call situational. But it's basically uh, a great thing to be uh, destroying Elena's with, destroying Eric's with, and also destroying um, Dual Magus with as well. Um, so those are three really annoying arena uh, users to worry about. Uh, so that would be something that would be really, really useful. Um, he also has uh, the Dark Matter power uh, if you get him to 5, you're already talking somewhere above 440. Adding additional power to that just really gets multiplied greatly. Um, so really focusing for those is going to be key. Um, normally I say, hey, you're probably going to use this one. They're both really, really important. You can also do HP quickness, but if you can find a sword that has three, all three of either the gear and magic or dark matter. That is what I think you're really going to be looking for. The skill effect. Uh, I know we have blunt here, um, and it might not be the right thing um, because he it does have a large skill. Uh, blunt may be something that you might want to focus on if you only get him to one heart. Uh, personally, though, I prefer buff. Uh, and if you self-buff him, especially if he can't attack anyone, all of a sudden you turn his greatest weakness into a pretty strong, decent strength. Doesn't require a lot of MP. Um, and you really focus on him. Top of that, what you can do is in arena defense, having that buff. Um, depending on how you build him and where you place him, you can force him to run around a little bit, 
which actually allows them to get really, really strong and really make the opponent's defense uh, struggle. Or opponent's offense, I should say, struggle. Um, Helm Splitter is probably the other one. The Blunt is only for people who just have the very, very basic with Demon Fighter Sorrow and want to try to uh, save MP for a little while. Uh, personally, though, you can change out Blunt um, for uh, for the uh, uh, decrease in defense. Uh, but with this high attack, uh, Helm Splitter is actually not a horrific idea uh, to run defense. All right, the pros cons poll. Uh, the guts passive is the first one that we're really going to see. That's guaranteed. Uh, Hyunko, he could be very annoying um, on defense if it keeps passing. Um, I did not get enough of him to really make it worthwhile. But with Demon Sword Fighter, uh, Sorrow, or just Sorrow here, um, that's guaranteed. Uh, that will be very useful. For most things and that every odd turn at the first awakening makes them hard to hit and hit even harder which is a really scary thing because i don't think there's really any units that hit harder especially at that 20 percent uh and his turn three and beyond um he does damage he gets angry um and that third and that third skill here which is actually in Japanese when it gets translated is called anger or becoming angry, which, you know, that 1.5x at 20%. Um, as I say, it will proc if you plan it correctly, guaranteed at least once. Um, you know, an enemy might say, ooh, all right, I want him to be hit. Then you go through it. That's fine. Um, he has pretty low defense power. Uh, will I pull? Yes, this is the Noct Dethroner. Uh, Nocturnus is now, on, I wouldn't say on the weaker side, because that's a lie. Um, but he is going to dethrone Noct as, you know, the best all-around unit in uh, the game uh, for us. Still the best all-around unit, JP. Uh, if you have the ability to pull, do so. Um Honestly, the only issue is, is DQ-11 units are quite good as well. And if you love DQ-11 and you want to, you know, pull for Eric or Veronica, I can't really argue about that at all. Uh, but Sorrow, if I'm just going to go from a just blank statement, most Swiss Army Knife unit in the game has a spell power uh, that's based off his insane physical attack. It's high agility, good dodge rate, has the ability to uh, lower attack, which actually makes him even stronger in the long run. Um, and you can add a skill to him. Really, really hard to beat. Um, I know I should be saying something witty here, but this is one of those... Easy kind of uh, deciding here. Um, now, and it's not some for Eric. Sorry, I forgot to change my title. This is for Sorrow. Sir Rose Garden. Um, you know, I would rather have called him Sir Rosengard, but eh. Um, other than that little uh, nitpick, this is a very interesting A unit. Um, if you get him uh, with the first awakening, the first three turns, he has an awakening called cover. Uh, it will be an auto cover. It is actually really, really useful in arena. He can buff his own defense power. He's a little, a little slow. His agility is actually pretty good for an A unit. Uh, he can help cover some of the units like uh, mage, uh, at least for the first three turns. And then all hell breaks loose at that point. But it has pretty good attack at 416. Um, he can actually heal himself with Miracle Sword uh, for 50% of the damage. And with his attack and the 195%, there is actually going to be some damage done there. Uh, and a Gale Sword too as well. 
Uh, his big issue is he does uh, slow movement and he can only cover for the first three turns. And that's if you have the first awakening. Um, more than likely, though, if you pull fairly hard for sorrow, you should probably get two roads and gardens or rose gardens. Sorry. Um, uh, adding a different attack element would be nice. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not spell power, it's attack power by um, inorganics. Uh, but all in all, the important part is he's a very good tank that could buff himself and still have that cover. Um, he is a very good arena tank unit. Uh, for PvE, he is only good for three turns. Uh, that's where he's unique, and the unique is good and bad. Uh, he can hit for damage, though, for a tank. And unlike most other tanks, he can actually do damage while taking. So I think he's actually a good unit, and this is a honestly a pretty kick-ass banner. Um, I know there's uh, some people that were surprised or mimicked here, but I did try and warn people. I just saw this happening. Um, it just kind of made sense with the schedule and also with how Sorrow's out. They delayed him two months. To be honest, he would have been a pull, but not nearly as much of a must-have pull as he is now. So, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, good luck on pulling him. I am actually going to, uh, this is going to be the one time in a while that I will try and actually have my polls done on Twitch so that I can actually then put it onto YouTube. I know I've been not doing that nearly as much. Uh, the only one that I really went for was Eric. I got him three hearts. Then I used my uh, 150 ticket plus uh, the uh, shards to get him to five hearts. Uh, Sorrow here, I think his really, really sweet power here is three hearts. Um, if you can get him to five hearts, obviously that's fantastic. Um, but... His fifth awakening isn't super, super busted, but it does make him last an incredible long time. Um, and as I say, I think I'm going for three hearts, um, but really secretly hoping for five hearts just because, you know, he is going to be badass. So good luck, enjoy, and good luck, and avoid being watched.